I just refinished this table and I absolutely love sitting out here in the morning and having my morning coffee. And now I have it all set up for painting. I have been wanting to do a um, painting of this tree that's actually in our neighborhood here, but it reminds me of trees up along the Oregon coast that are all twisted and turned due to the strong wind conditions along the ocean there on the cliffs. So I'm kind of putting the two together and I've started with this black and white photo. It was a color photo that I took in the neighborhood here of the tree and I turned it to black and white and then I turned up the contrast so that I could see it better and I will end up putting that on the canvas by tracing. But the first thing that I did is I drew three lines on the canvas. The first line up across here represents the horizon and that will be the top of the water. This line right here, which you can barely see, is actually going to be the ground line. The tree will sit along here and the background will be a little bit of ocean and then the tree branches will come up this way. I have a palette knife just in case I decide to use that and I have my gloves. I buy these latex free gloves which are really nice. I buy them in size small and I'm planning on doing some finger painting. The reason I've decided to do that today is because it's really difficult for me to stay away from super detail unless I do finger painting or palette work. And I want the background to be a bit more abstract because the tree itself is very detailed. So once I get the background down, then I will put down some uh, transfer paper, carbon paper, and trace the tree. I'm actually merging several different um, images together because I got a really pretty image of our sky one day that was basically a pale blue with peachy white clouds. So I'm bringing that color into the sky and then I'm using the ocean background just from my memory from when I lived up in um, <clears throat> along the Oregon coast and then the tree from my neighborhood here. So the way that I always do this I just dip my brush in the water and dab it off on paper towel and then I just start picking up some paint. And now at this point I'm just getting the paint laid down on the canvas, at least a bottom coat. And it can be a little streaked, it really doesn't matter, this is just the base coat. And I often add extra gesso to my canvas, I didn't do that this time, but it's actually a good idea. These come pre-gessoed, but like I say in my other videos, they usually don't have enough gesso. And this is a gallery wrap canvas, and so I go around the edge as well. And if you use kind of an X style of stroke, you work the paint in pretty well. And as we come down towards the horizon, it gets lighter. I like to work with this size of canvas because it fits into my scanner and I can scan them for prints. Once I scan it in at a high resolution, I can order prints or have it printed to just about anything. I'm doing my brush strokes back and forth because I want that to look correct later. And this is a little bit gray out here. Now the sea is never exactly the same color as the uh, sky. But I don't want it to just stand out a lot either. And my ground doesn't have to be exactly straight across, of course. The um, horizon line does need to be straight across. You would never have an ocean be uneven. 
Now at this point I'm going to go ahead and put in my sky because that'll kind of determine what my what reflections and things I might want to have down here. But like I said, I don't want that to be too busy. So I'm just going to put in some... Now that looks a little wild right now, but that'll be toned down. Just getting something in there. I don't usually wear gloves, but it's a good idea to wear gloves. So I'm trying to be good today since I'm doing a video. Now I can also use a palette knife. Palette knife gives a little different look and helps not be too perfect. I don't want this perfect. So I'll do various layers across here. And I'm keeping in mind that my tree has two branches. It's lined down like this and then it's going to have one shoot that comes up here and another one up here. So there'll be a lot of dark branches and things in the tree up this way. So at this point I'm going to get some ultramarine blue. It's blue but it's ever so slightly to a purple and I'm going to take that and mix it with white, quite a bit of white. And then I can come in here and tone down some of this area. Kind of soften that up. And you can make them look a little wispier by just adding a bit of a tone like this. Kind of like having a bit of color up there. I don't want to take all of that out. I just want to tone it down a little bit. So when you're working along like this, you're just kind of going by what you feel like. And I could even use a little bit of, I'm taking off my glove now just so I can kind of have a better feel for the brush. So I've used palette knife, finger painting, and brush at this point. So this adds a little bit of different kind of feeling. Now there's a lot more that I could do there, but I just don't want to have it interfere with the trees later on. That's just kind of pretty. So I think I'll leave it like that. I may just kind of smooth that in a bit. It's pretty easy to add detail when, once you start picking up a brush, so that's why I don't want to do too much of that kind of soften that out a bit. I use a lot of Payne's Gray. It's a really a nice color. It almost looks black, but it's about as dark as you need to go. And then I'm going to pick up some of these other colors too. This is a little bit dry here, but this was purple. And I can toss some white in. So I touch the Payne's Gray, I touch the purple, I touch the white, and then I can just kind of start laying that in. And that brings in a little bit of what you see up. Well, that's too much, but that's okay. That will come out. And at this point, I don't think I'll worry about my glove. You should wear gloves when you're doing this because you're working with uh, paints. Some of these have cadmium and various uh, minerals and things in them, which might not be real healthy. Now this is an aqua color here that I'm throwing in. I had some paints on my brush here from other paintings that I've been doing, so I've decided I might as well use them. They're on my palette. For palette, I just use paper plate. I can throw them away. Very simple. And that can blend in back in there. I'm going to bring back my brush now so I can blend these a little bit more how I want. I 
everybody has their own way of doing things. I I just kind of go by feel. What do I what do I feel as I'm painting along? Where do I think something needs to go? Like that stands out too much, so I will take that down some. I can do that by adding just a little bit of ultramarine blue. See, that kind of takes that out for me. And I like to have a little bit of white for white caps. I don't, it's not pure white, but I, I grab the white that has something else in with it, a little bit of light blue. So it kind of comes across, your brain tells you that's the white of a white cap, but it, it's really not white. I just kind of go back and forth like this to make the, the feeling of um, wave action there. And your brain will interpret this as sky and waves. And you can just toss in a little color like this once in a while and see what you think of it. And if it's too much, you can go back and add something else. But when you have little dark areas like that, it gives a feeling of maybe shadows in the water, like that's a little bit deeper along there. And then I do a lot of these little squiggly kind of lines and, and then I feel like I want to do something back there still. Now right at the horizon, it can tend to kind of fade out a little bit too. Right along there, you don't want that line real distinct because you can actually have, uh, sometimes you can have a little bit darker line there, but there are times when you have sea mist. So that actually would, would almost fuzz that out a bit, little bit. Like you could, if I had a medium here, I could put, um, you could put clear medium on your brush. It looks kind of like water, but it's not really good to use too much water. So I'm taking a tiny bit of white with my Payne's Gray to make that quite a bit lighter. This is still too dark here, so I'm, I'm just, I keep adding white until I get to where I'm pretty happy with it. And then I can kind of almost fade that out back there. Still not totally happy though. I want to be happy with it before I go on to my tree and my ground. And that's just a little bit of roughness back there. So now I'm going to start putting down a base for the ground. And the ground can be different colors. Don't be afraid to use some color. Like this is purple here, but which may seem really strange, but I'll be changing that up later. I'm just getting, getting something down right now. And I kind of like that. I think that's pretty actually. Don't feel like because it's ground it has to be brown. It should be very different also once it's finished. It won't look like this. The more layers you put down, the more realistic something will look. But um, this is a little different in that once I get the tree in, then that kind of that that'll be it then. You can paint around objects like trees that you get in there, but it's a little difficult. I have a tendency to be a little bit dark. People are always asking me about that. But this is not meant to be a moody painting. I, I really love that tree. And it was a beautiful day that I was out looking at that tree with a very good friend of mine. So when I think about that day, I have really good memories. So I'm automatically drawn to these colors. I love painting out here. I can hear the birds. It's just a beautiful spot. Some of this may not even show later once I get the tree in there anyway. Okay, so I'm going to stop fussing with that now. Now I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back and put in different colors for the ground. Okay, now I'm ready to put in some ground and I have to kind of think about my tree. My tree is going to actually be right where I have 
the paper. Um, when you do something like this, you can enlarge or shrink it to fit your canvas. But I thought this was just about right. And the tree will come up out of the ground here, go across this way. So that will be right about here. That's where it'll be in. And I'll have some foreground and things down here. I might even have a little walk or just, just something that your eye kind of barely picks up. And then it'll come out this way. But this, these have branches, and this will go on over here. And this will be a very dark brown black with just a, the tiniest hint of dark green to the leaves. And this can come out this way. So you can see where this is quite busy in here. That's why I didn't want that to be too busy. So I'm just taking my fingers, and like I said, you should be using, you should be using a, um, some gloves. And I just grab a little of one color and a little of another and just start kind of throwing that out there. And I'm not worrying a lot about where things are going. I just kind of do whatever I feel like. And the purple color shows through from behind, which is pretty. And I've got a little green out here. Now, that's too much green. You have to be very, very careful when you're using hooker green. But I can all that way down. Now if I wanted to I could also <clears throat> instead of using my finger I could get kind of a similar effect by just laying this ground in with palette knife. And that might that might be what I want to do. Now I need a little bit more dark brown. The problem with using a plate that already had colors on it is sometimes it's hard to know which colors have already dried up. Now this is my my dark brown. I'll touch it up with a little bit of white. The real dark brown is burnt umber. Um, the darkest brown is raw umber. So see that's kind of a pretty pretty effect there. The color right here is a green gold by Golden, and I really, <clears throat> I really like that color. I use it quite a bit. And I can tone down the whole thing by adding some gray. So really, it just depends on the look that you're after. I'm not going to throw in any more emerald green, which is the hooker green, but to me it looks like an emerald green. That's just too dark. Oh, I got a little bit on my palette knife by accident, but that's all right. All these different things just give it a different look. And if something looks really strange as you're going along, don't worry about it because you can change it a lot. Now I'm just trying to keep from getting it too detailed. I know for a fact, I know myself, and if I bring in a brush, it will suddenly get too detailed. Now I also look at the overall composition. I have some gold up here, so a little bit down here is nice. I can bring down a little of that purple as well. Plus I have some in the water. Now, just to show you, if you prefer, you can still use brush. Add little grasses and things. It's kind of fun to play around. And throwing in a bit of dark here and there, that, that adds dimension. So I just kind of keep my brush moving and dab here and there. There I had a little bit of yellow on my brush and that worked out fine too. I like that ultramarine blue, it's pretty. It keeps the blue theme going. And you can you can bring in as much detail as you want. You can make it look like they're little pebbles and things. But I think the tree will have enough of its own detail. Now when you get down into this stuff, you can add upward strokes because that's the way the grass is growing. 
and I tend to start on the low side and then I I go up and I have several colors on my brush at any given time because that gives dimension as well so I'll just dip it in one color and then another color and I don't really worry too much about what colors and if I don't like something I can certainly go over it now see that just adds little highlights and I have no way of knowing right now exactly where here it'll be covered up by the tree so there's I'm not going to get attached to any one area because it may be gone later so some of the same colors that are up in the sky I have in the water and I actually have down here as well so they all tie in the fun thing for me about painting is just watching something emerge start out with a blank canvas literally and something just comes off out of it. Just looking for any little spots now that bother me. I put the carbon paper underneath my photocopy of the tree and I traced and it came out really well except for on the grass and I think it's because the ground area is just fairly dark. So I did what you can see here in the photo. I cut out the tree in the lower portion and then I just laid that down over my painting and I used a little tiny liner brush with white paint and just kind of traced around the shape of the bottom part of the trunk. So I just dip my brush in the water. I dab it on the paper towel to get off any excess. And then I may just start picking up random colors like I tend to do. There's a little Payne's Gray and a little bit of, of raw umber. The raw umber is just slightly darker than the burnt umber. And I can kind of just start laying that down see what I think. And if I kind of experiment and I throw in a little color, get a little different look. And I'll probably have several coats of this as well. Now white, white is really good for coverage and for um, blending. And down here it's quite, quite dark. So if I want anything to show down here, I really have to have a little bit more white. Sometimes by putting on a white base because this is so dark. If I add a white base and then I come back and add colors, the colors will show more. So I think I will do that at this point. I love painting trees because they're very, very interesting to me. And depending on what this looks like when it's all finished, I might add just a little boulder over here or something, just kind of something to take your eye this way, depending on what is going on up here. And I really like the sky. I had come back and added a little bit of touch up to this area. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it or not, but I think it's going to be nice. And the way the tree is dark against this bright sky is pretty too. Kind of helps it stand out a bit. Paint's gray is not a thick paint, so I find that I need to add something like white to it to give it a little body. And since I have my brush loaded with different colors, I don't know exactly which color is going to show at any given time. So if there's an area that I don't want that white later, I can certainly come back and cover that. And I like to jump around a little bit when I'm working on something. I'll work on one area and then I kind of purposely move to someplace else. Throw in a little, another color here. So it's kind of like catching the light from the sky. 
I don't want pink on my tree though. When you mix red with white or light color, you can sometimes accidentally get pink, which is a little odd. I don't want pink. Any other color you can lighten by adding white, but when you do that to red, you get pink, and that's usually not what the person wants. Now, part of this tree, of course, I can um, freehand some of it, but you can see where the, the overall shape was just so perfect. I just didn't really want to freehand that. I felt a lot better having that put down for me by tracing. And because branches are never the same color all the way through, that's another reason why I like to move my brush around. Because the next time I come through, I will automatically have different um, paints on my brush. Okay, I'm happy with that. I think that really kind of captures everything that I wanted. I wanted um, that tree, and I wanted the feeling of the ocean, and I liked the sky that I had seen in our neighborhood. I took that photo in my backyard, actually, and it's not finished yet. I will let this dry and then I'll come back and add little tiny touch-ups to the branches and of course I don't have my leaves on there yet. Okay, I touched up this little area here where there was the line I guess made from the carbon paper and I really like that. I just added just a touch of white and I added a little bit over here then too and I touched up a few little sticks on the tree. So now I will let that thoroughly dry before I come back and add a little bit of needles here and there on the tree. Okay, now I'm ready to put on the little needles that are on the trees. And for that I'm using my favorite little frazzly brush. This used to be a fine liner and it got damaged over time, but this little frazzly end here is perfect for making sea foam and little grasses and things like that. So I'm going to try that for making the little needles on the tree. And I'm using green gold by Golden, yellow ochre, and a little bit of Payne's Gray. I don't want them to show up as obvious green. Um, I just kind of want to have a little tint. I'm going to kind of play around with the color here, make sure that it's not too green. I could even throw in a little bit of brown. Have a little bit of burnt umber here. So I pick up a little of each color on my plate and then I mix it a bit on the plate to make sure it's about the right color. And I can just come through and add wherever I want a little bit of green hanging down. It brings a little bit of life to the painting. And just like with other areas of the painting, I kind of skip around a little so I don't get too much of one color in one spot. So this gives the effect that I'm wanting as far as just a little bit of sparse needles hanging on the end of the tree. They don't have to be perfectly evenly spaced. This kind of has a little bit of a windblown look in that most of these branches are on this side of the tree. And on this side it's a little more balanced, but it's still going this way. I, I kind of like that effect. The trees along the Oregon coast are all bent. It's like that on the upper northern end of the California coast as well. Beautiful areas up in there. So I posted the link to craftandfabriclinks.com where my pattern for this is. If you would like to print it 
Uh, you can download the pattern and trace this onto your own canvas and then follow the video and create your own place of escape. And play around with the colors. You can make it a dark gray day or a beautiful bright sunny day. And just have fun with it. Thank you for watching and please remember to subscribe. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit here so you can see a little bit more detail on the painting.